Dr. Jason Saunders with HBOT USA. Question number four. We keep hearing reports of comparisons to some of these later stages of COVID uh, being similar to almost acute altitude sickness, or um, as Dr. Cameron Kyle Seidel said, it's almost like you're a passenger in an airplane at 30,000 feet and someone's letting the pressure out of the cabin. Um, so what does that mean exactly? What, what exactly is the correlation between pressure and our ability to maintain normal oxygen levels? And so uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier. We said that our atmosphere has a pressure and that pressure creates a gradient and that gradient is what drives oxygen into our cells or really into our circulation uh, as we breathe. So like I said, at sea level, the, the pressure is about 14.7 PSI. Now, air has roughly 21% oxygen, no matter where you go. So whether you're at the beach, sea level, or on top of Mount Everest, the air around us has 21% oxygen. But the reason that it's more difficult to breathe at altitude is because the density of the molecules spreads out the higher we go. And so the pressure of our atmosphere is higher, closer to the ocean, and the pressure is less as we get to altitude. And as those molecules of air uh, start to separate, when we breathe in, we might be breathing in the same volume of air, but we're breathing in less molecules of oxygen. And so in an airplane, let's say at 30,000 feet, we can't breathe. So what they do is they pressurize the cabin, and by pressurizing the cabin, you're taking the molecules of air in the cabin of the airplane, you're bringing them back closer together. In an airplane, it's usually compressed to the equivalent of about 8,000 feet. And while that's not sea level, it's enough pressure and enough density of air that we can pretty well almost fully saturate while we're traveling. Now, people have issues while traveling, things like you know headaches or they don't sleep well, or uh, people notice if you drink alcohol at altitude, it kicks in a little bit faster. A lot of that has to do with our inability to fully saturate um, at, at higher altitudes. So, so in this disease process it, with COVID, it appears as though these patients are able to talk in some cases, they're able to breathe relatively well, or at least well enough that the ventilator doesn't seem to be something that would be such a magical component. Yet at the same time, their oxygen saturation, their ability to saturate uh, their tissues and their cells with oxygen is becoming very hampered by the virus itself. So we talked again a little bit earlier about the fact that the virus appears to be attacking hemoglobin, which is uh, affecting our ability to deliver oxygen. Uh, so once we breathe in and we attach oxygen to the hemoglobin, if the virus attacks the hemoglobin and that protein starts to unravel, we can no longer effectively deliver the oxygen from that red blood cell to the tissue. And so what are some strategies for dealing with that? The reason we brought up hyperbaric in the first place a few days ago is because hyperbaric is the exact opposite of going to elevation. In fact, that airplane with a pressurized cabin is basically a hyperbaric chamber. So all that happens inside of a hyperbaric chamber is that you add pressure, which brings the molecules of air closer together, which increases our capacity to deliver oxygen into our body. Now, if you go below sea level, which is really what a hyperbaric chamber is going to do, you could bring them so close together that you can create a pressure gradient that far exceeds what our body is used to being exposed to. And what that does very specifically is not only does it allow for increased diffusion of oxygen, but it literally dissolves molecules of a gas, oxygen, into the liquid portion of our blood called our plasma. So normally the plasma does not carry a lot of oxygen. We get absorption of oxygen into the plasma and from the plasma, it immediately goes to that red blood cell and then gets carried away. We don't really use the plasma as a reservoir or a delivery service of oxygen under normal conditions. But if you pressurize the environment enough, you could literally dissolve oxygen into that liquid portion. And now you have free floating oxygen all throughout our circulation able to very freely move about our body and go into the tissues and cells that need it. The best example of that is a bottle of seltzer. So you see a few bubbles out here, but we don't know how much 
is actually in there. If this bottle was a little bit more flat, it might even look like water. You might not even know that there, are, there were bubbles in here. But as soon as you crack it, all of a sudden you get more and more bubbles coming to the top of the bottle. And so as those bubbles come out, the pressure is being released. So there are two things that happen inside a hyperbaric chamber. The first is you're taking, just like this can of seltzer, you're taking a gas, this is carbon dioxide and water, but you're taking a gas and you're pressurizing it, and then you're dissolving that into the liquid, water, and basically it goes into solution. You don't even realize it's there. So when you're in the hyperbaric chamber, you're taking oxygen, you're dissolving it into our liquid, which is plasma, and that oxygen is now able to freely move about our body unhampered and completely bypasses the red blood cell carrying capacity altogether. But the next thing that happens is when you get out of the chamber, just like when we open that bottle, the bubbles start coming out. And when we talk about it in terms of our body, when oxygen starts to come out of circulation like that, it's not inert, it has an effect. And so there's a certain distance that oxygen is able to move under normal circumstances from a capillary into a cell. But when we're in a hyperbaric chamber and we dissolve all this extra oxygen into our system, and then we get depressurized and we come out of that chamber, oxygen starts to bubble out of solution. And as oxygen bubbles out of solution, it's interacting with all of the tissues and cells that it comes across as it's coming out. And to a tune of four times a greater distance. In other words, that distance that oxygen could normally move from a capillary to a cell is increased four times further when you get out of the hyperbaric chamber. So now all of a sudden, you're delivering a, an extraordinarily high amount of oxygen to all of the cells and tissues in our body, and we're bypassing the red blood cell carrying capacity. So in particular with this virus that's destroying our hemoglobin, if we can oxygenate these patients and keep them more highly oxygenated for longer periods of time while they're fighting the infection, we can buy them time to heal and recover.